What's up, FOA Squad? I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Life with Anthony. I hope that you guys are doing well out there. Happy whatever day I get to post this video for you guys. Hopefully, it will be today. All right, guys, today I'm going to be doing a quick uh, life update video. I want to share with you guys some things that are coming up in the next few months. I'm also going to reveal where I am going out of the country in November which it seemed like I totally forgot to tell you guys, but I have not. I was just waiting for the right whole video to incorporate that into. And this seemed to be the right opportunity. All right, let's start off with the stickers that I asked you guys to send me from your city and or state. There is a time limit on when you can send or how long you have to send uh, those stickers to me. Uh, July 22nd, which is a Saturday, I'm going to be making a special trip down to that part of PA where my storage unit, my PO box, my UPS box are. I'm not in that part of PA often, and that's why I'm making a special trip to go down there and collect all my mail and any packages that I may have. So you have until July the 22nd. So if you have any intentions on sending me a sticker of your city and state, uh, please make sure that it is uh, at the P.O. Box by July 22nd. After that, I have no idea when the next time I'll be in that part of PA. So let's get those stickers in, y'all. I'm very anxious and, and curious to see how many I get. And I'm ready to get up on that roof and start putting those stickers on the uh, storage box there. It's going to be great. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is something that I am considering buying um, it's a semi big purchase well actually it is a big purchase and I have talked about it with a couple people and it makes sense to me um, it's going to enhance my campground experience because you guys know me I'm always thinking of ways to uh, enhance and make my uh, lifestyle this lifestyle for me a lot easier a lot comfortable a lot more comfortable and I think this would definitely do that and it's also will it will be like sort of the middle ground of something else which you will understand once I tell you what it is which I'm about to do right now I don't know why I even went there <laughs> Okay, I am thinking about getting a pop-up tent, a pop-up pop camper, I should say. Um, there are several reasons why this thought came to mind of uh, considering getting one. Now, I want you guys to know that it is a consideration now, and it's a high consideration. So it's probably likely going to happen more so than not likely to happen. And... There are a couple reasons why I, I would like it. And I know people might be like, oh my God, Anthony, you just now bought this kit from Canada and put in your van to make your uh, van more comfortable. And I agree with you. I just did that. But I'm all about options. I'm all about being prepared for every scenario. And yes, I am going to be still using this uh, minivan, the inside of this minivan and the kit and everything in certain situations. For instance, when I'm in Baltimore, I will not take the pop-up with me because I don't want to be driving around the streets of Baltimore with the pop-up behind me. So I will leave that in PA where I intend on getting a storage place for it. So when I'm not using it, I can just keep it there. And as well, when I'm hanging out in PA, I don't want to be dragging it around uh, in that small town for the period of time that I'm going to be there. So once again, I would leave it in storage and I will utilize my minivan. Also, depending on what type of road trips I go on, I may leave it at PA again because it, it just all depends. So for me, it's about creating options and trying to be prepared for every scenario. Just like now, I'm in my van because my van is, at the time, cooler than it is in the tent because you can, the tent is sitting out in the sun. So I'll go into my tent 
later on in the evening because that's when the weather will start cooling off and it'll be very, really, really comfortable to be inside the tent. So let me uh, share my thought process with you guys. And while I'm on the subject of thought process, I want to uh, point this out or mention this. Some people seem to always think that I'm explaining myself to you guys and I get comments on these types of videos uh, frequently. You know, you don't have to explain yourself. You can do what you want with your money, this, that, and the other. I don't look at it as me explaining myself. I look at it as me sharing my thought process with you guys. So I never, you know, I don't come on here thinking, okay, let me explain to the FOA community uh, why I'm doing this or why I'm thinking about this. It's not about explaining. It's all about sharing my thought process uh, with you guys. So the main, main reason why I am highly considering getting a pop-up is air condition. It is, it's hot and it's going to be even hotter and, you know, as July rolls on and into August. And it's a good way to have air conditioning, you know? And a pop-up camper is less expensive than a travel trailer. Uh, I can get them at different weight classes. Um, they will be more suitable for my minivan to uh, tow. And I just, the more I think about it, it just seems like a really, really good idea. I have now been to enough campgrounds to know which of the campgrounds that I have already gone to is suitable for me to have a pop-up. Like where I am now, with in the, in the overflow section of this campground, a pop-up tent would be perfect. A pop-up camper, I should say, would be perfect to be in even though it's like sunny right now but i would have my air condition hooked up and it would be a lot more comfortable i want to say that to you guys that i am a person of progression slow progression i like to work a little then progress to something else work more progress to something else until i get to where i want to be with as many options as I have. And that's that's my thought process, you know? I don't want to purchase a pop-up and then don't have no money left. So that's why I say I like to work and then progress. Because when I decide to buy a pop-up, I wanna be able to afford the pop-up and still have some, <coughs> some money in the bank. So that's, that's my thought process for that. Uh, another reason why I'm considering a pop-up besides the main reason, which is the air condition, is I'm considering getting a puppy. And um, this is a low consideration, not like a high consideration of the pop-up camper. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a pop-up camper. But as far as a puppy is concerned, it's, it's a low thought. So <laughs> whether that happens or not, I guess I will make that decision once I get a pop-up. But having a pop-up would make having a puppy a lot easier because they too will be under air conditioner and et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know, um, maybe it'll be a cat, who knows? But it, at any point, at any point, it's a low consideration, you know, so it's, it, it's, it's just me worth me mentioning it and not saying too much more about it because it, it may not happen and it may happen. But I just wanted to let you guys know that it has been a thought on my mind. Um, now, some of the things that I did consider about getting a pop up is the cost of the campgrounds. Uh, my cost to be at campgrounds may increase because I don't know. Uh, if certain campgrounds will allow me to put a pop-up on the tent section, they may insist that I be at a regular hookup plug-in type uh, site. I do know for sure that, y'all see that fly flying around here? I do know for sure that certain campgrounds, I will be able to put, my, uh, put a pop-up in the tent area. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
in the tent area just by experience and just looking around and knowing and going to that campground. So my expenses may go up at certain campgrounds, but that's okay with me because being able to hook up and have some air, it would be worth it, especially if I'm going to be there for, you know, two weeks periods of time. Um, I think that's all the reasons why I want to have um, a pop-up. Um, the more I think about it, the more appealing the idea to me of having a pop-up. Uh, and I think that will be it. I think the progression will stop there. <laughs> After I get a pop-up, you know, that that's where it will end, you know. I have a nice van, a nice comfy van. I have a nice pop-up that I can have air at campgrounds and everything. And they also have a heater. I can have heat as well. So that sounds very, very appealing to me. Now, the type of pop-up that I have been looking at and has caught my attention, um, and I saw these at the Florida um, RV show back in January. Now, I'm not particular, uh, the A-liner, the ones that shape like this, and you had to put down this wall, put down this wall, put down, there's no like beds you have to pull out like some of the standard um, pop-up campers are. Now, the reason why I'm looking at the A-liner, in spite of the shape of it, which is not that appealing to me, but I can get over that in a hot minute, is because when I was reading and looking at different ones, the ones that pull out, got a bed on that side, a, a bed on that side, when I was looking at that and it was talking about the weather and those types of things, and of course, you guys know, I have been through all sorts of weather now. Windy conditions, when my canopy flew over and whoosh, you know, and then there was a video I made where it was a downpour and my canopy was giving me a fit and I had to try to put poo noodles on the corner, all sorts of things. So I feel like I have experienced the wide range of uh, weather conditions. And the reason, again, for the A-liner is it's a hard, it's a hard frame, a hard body frame. And I think that would be more appropriate for those types of conditions. Because when selecting one, I can't ignore the weather conditions that I have already experienced. Now, the uh, A-liner has very different sizes and all, you know, different layouts and stuff. Um, some of them come with a, a cooker already built in. Some of them just come with a space that you can put your cooktop on. Um, but I'm looking to have one that already have uh, a cooker on it. So <clears throat> I'm pretty excited about the idea. Now, when might I purchase one of these? I'm looking at after I come back from Japan. <clears throat> We're gonna cut that part out. So, I'm looking to get one. So, when will I uh, consider getting one? Probably at the end of this year when I start my uh, south campgrounds when it's cold up here or starts to get cold up here in the winter. I would purchase one right before then. So at that point in time, I would not need a storage unit for it or storage place for it because I will be taking it down south and doing my south uh, stretch for like the next three months or whatever, January, February, March, April, probably four, four, four months or so. And during those four months, I will just be at, you know, different campgrounds that I've already gone to and know would be appropriate for uh, a pop-up camper. And that's part of the reason why I have been going to these different campgrounds because I really want to narrow 
it down to like maybe two campgrounds that I spend or split most of my time in during the three or four months that I am down south when it's cold up here. Uh, I do not want to continue hopping around from campground to campground. I'm doing it now because I've never been to many of them and I want to see which ones are suitable or would be suitable for me to spend a longer period of time. Um, this campground that I'm at now, I would consider coming back if I am in this same area that I'm on in now, as opposed to being down in Tent Valley. I'd rather be up here away from Tent Valley. Um, it was a lot of tents down there, a lot of different um, pop-ups and travel trailers down there during the weekend, the 4th of July weekend. And I would not have wanted to be down there during this past weekend. I'm about peace and quiet <laughs> when I'm at these campgrounds and once again venture out when I want to venture out. I do not want to be around chaos and you know lots of people all the time. So I would consider coming back to this campground for a longer period of time. Uh, the cost of this campground was uh, less than uh, a couple of the campgrounds that I've already gone to. I think I'm paying $28 a night here, which is pretty good in comparison to like a sawmill, which I told you guys is like $35, $36 per night. So yeah, I would consider coming here and spending some more time, especially when I got a pop-up camper with some air in it and stuff, and I can just be chilling, relaxing, you know? I think that would be good. So this is one that I would keep on my list to come back and spend more time between this one and Hillside. Now, speaking of Hillside right quick, the spot that I usually get at Hillside 101, I'm not sure if a pop-up, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that a pop-up and my van would not be able to fit in that spot. So I would either, either have the choice of just putting my pop-up there and parking outside of the, um, parking outside of the campground, which I will not have any utilization of my van but that would be okay for that particular campground because the pop-up would have the kitchen in it and I can utilize that um, or I can look around which I'm going to do when I go back there I'm gonna look around at other sites and see what other sites would be more appropriate where I can have my pop-up and my van on the same site but it may cost me a little bit more money to be on that site because I do stay at one of the cheapest sites there and the smallest site there. So getting a, a bigger site that will accommodate a pop-up and my minivan might cost me a little bit more, but I'm okay with that um, as long as I can, if I make that decision, it's enough space to have my van and the um which when you think about it, I don't really, I wouldn't really need my van to be on the site if I'm not going to be using the, the outdoor kitchen or whatever. So it might be a matter of me just using the same site and, you know, just putting my pop up. But I don't feel, I don't know how I feel about just having my pop up on there. But anyway, we'll see about that. All right, enough of the, about that. Now let's move on to the final thing I want to update you guys on. Excuse me. And that's where I am going in November. It was so funny to me when I was reading the comments where people were trying to guess uh, when I asked you guys to guess where I might be going. And it's one person that I can remember now from the comments because that video was out uh, a little bit ago that guess the two possible places that I could be going in November. And that was Helen Hensel. Helen said, Anthony, you are either going to Australia or Japan. And I've always said on here that my two dream places to go to is Australia and Japan. I wanna go to Australia so that I possibly make it to the US uh, not the U.S., the um, Australian Open for tennis. That usually happens in January. But then I also wanted to go to Tokyo. And 
I'm going to Tokyo. <laughs> I am going to Tokyo, Japan. And I'm telling you, this is probably the most excited I have been about a trip. Tokyo. Now, let me tell you guys the number one reason why I am interested in Tokyo. The food. The food. Oh, my goodness. They have all kinds of different foods that I've never, ever tasted before. I am making a list now of the places that I'm going to go and try. I watch um, Pablo's videos and he does a lot of uh, videos about Japan and his favorite spots in Japan. I'm going to be staying in the Tokyo Station area, uh, just about walking distance from that main area. And the Tokyo Station is a train station as well where you can catch trains and go to other parts of Tokyo. So that's gonna be very beneficial and helpful to me so that I can get to different parts of uh, Japan and I don't necessarily have to stay in the same area. And I am so excited. And just the Tokyo station itself, from what I'm learning about it, has it is huge and has so many different eating places. I'll tell you guys, I already got a list of like six or seven food places and the meal or food from that place I'm going to try. And I'm, I'm telling you, you talk about going out the comfort zone, I'm going out the comfort zone on this trip. I'm going to be trying foods I've never imagined that I ever would be trying otherwise. And I'm just so, so super excited about this trip. And to be able to just go there in my lifetime is just, it's just amazing to me. And I cannot wait. And someone mentioned, you know, it can't be Japan because he's only gone for seven days. Seven days is enough. Seven days is enough. Um, it doesn't matter how long I go. It, I'm not going to see everything. I do know for sure another thing that I'm definitely going to see is Disney there. They have Tokyo Disney. And y'all know I'm not going to Japan without going to Tokyo, to Disney. And... It's only about 35 minute train ride from where I'm staying. So you know I'll be spending the day or however long in, in Disney, so excited. And can you believe that, and I'm also going to be going to Disney and Anaheim. I would have gone to all three Disneys after the Japan trip, unless there's a Disney somewhere else I don't know about. <laughs> I know it's Tokyo Disney, Anaheim Disney and Orlando Disney and I would have gone to all three Disney's and y'all know how I love Disney <laughs> So I'm super super excited about that. But man. Oh man the food the food Japan has some good food boy They have some good food and it's inexpensive food, too So y'all gonna get a lot of food content from me seeing me trying the best food that they have to offer there and i'm I, i'm really excited because y'all know i love ramen i am so excited to try some really good authentic ramen from over there not saying that you know i don't know the difference you know but i'm assuming that the ramen over there they they know the flavors the the broth is, is going to be ah uh, i am i am i'm so i'm so i'm stoked I am stoked about this trip and um, I'm going to take you guys along with me as much as possible and have you guys experience and share some of these foods that I'm going to be trying out and I'm also going to fit in a couple of other type uh, day trips and, and things. Um, it's going to not only be about food but mostly about food. But I am going to try to go to some other things like maybe a, some botanical gardens or something that's really, really known in um, Tokyo. So I'm, I'm super excited. There is another event that I, uh, not event, but another activity that I'm going to do. But I'm trying to figure out the, what would be the best way for me to film that because I don't have a GoPro and 
this activity would seem like it would be more appropriate if I have a GoPro, uh, but we'll see. But I'm definitely going to try to fit that in as well. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm I'm so I'm so stoked, you guys. Can you imagine? I'm going to Japan. I'm going to Japan. We are going to Japan. <laughs> We are going to Japan. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. And I always say this and I will always continue to say this that all of this that I'm able to do in my life now is because of the support of the FOA community. Um, I cannot thank you guys enough for your support of the FOA community. I said this before and I'll say it again. The FOA community is definitely one of the best communities on the YouTube platform. I stand by it. And I'm just so excited and so happy that I'm able to do this in my lifetime. Woo! Tokyo! I better learn a couple words. <laughs> Because when I went to Mexico, I was on, <laughs> I was on, I was on my phone or my translator in Mexico saying, two sausage McMuffins with egg <laughs> in the translator. <laughs> the translator would say, two something. It was just a hot mess every time I went to McDonald's and the people didn't understand what I was saying. And I was up there playing charade with them. No, two, two. <laughs> so I'm going to learn a couple of phrases. And you know what I always say if I learn a couple of phrases to say to somebody, I'm still not going to know what they're saying if they're going to respond, you know. <laughs> if I ask somebody, where is the nearest bathroom? You know, I'm not going to understand what they say. But anyway, I when I was at McDonald's in Mexico, boy, I would say something and then I would put put it up to them and then I say, wait a minute, and then I get in the mode and I let them go ahead and speak Spanish and then I say, and then I would... <laughs> Ooh, that was something else, boy, but I had myself cracking up in there when I was on there. Two sausage McMuffin with egg. And they thought I meant two sausages on a patty or, or sandwich or something like that and I, I wanted two sandwiches with one sausage on it you know the sausage McMuffin no egg and I'm telling you that one day I was in there cracking up because I was in McDonald's two sausage <laughs> so Tokyo is going to be quite interesting trying to communicate and everything but I'm so excited and I hope that you guys are really really excited to be coming along with me. Um, I'm going to try to record a lot of the whole process. You know, nowadays, you know, I, I come on here and say, I'm I'm back in Baltimore <laughs> or I'm, I'm back at the next campground and I don't take you guys through that process of getting from one destination to the other. But with this Tokyo trip, I'm definitely going to make an effort to take you guys through the process of everything from beginning to end as much as possible. So it's going to be really, really exciting and I just cannot wait. All right, guys, that is it for today's video and all the updates that I wanted to share with you guys. Your, bro your boy here, Anthony, is going to Japan. Konnichiwa. And I just, I just cannot, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Ah, oh, my goodness. Just thinking about that trip, just, just, I'm just so excited. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. As always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. You just don't know. And I'll see you guys the next time. Ooh, the sun is going down. The sun is out. Thank you. I'm feeling a breeze right now. My tent looks like the sun is not on it. That's what I'm talking about. Stay just like that, Mother Nature, because Mother Nature been showing her law behind lately. Stay just like that. Somebody told me, you always complaining about the rain. <laughs> you should be thankful you woke up today. <laughs>
<laughs> I was like, okay, you try being out of camping all the time and it's downpouring rain in a week out of two weeks. <laughs> you gonna say something to you? <laughs> you all to be thankful you woke up today. You always complaining about the rain. I'm like, ah! <laughs> see you guys the next time. <laughs>